Hello and welcome to History Respawned. I'm your host John Harney. Today we're looking at Bomber Crew, a World War II game from Runner Duck in which the player controls the crew of an Avro Lancaster, a British heavy bomber similar in role and design to the American B-17 Flying Fortress. You control a group of airmen and airwomen that must drop bombs at enemy targets in occupied Nazi territory to the east of the English Channel, shoot down enemy fighters, take out U-boats, photograph compounds and make it back to base in one piece. Making it back is often a close run thing, and the game clearly owes a lot to FTL's gameplay mechanics, intentionally making the player feel like there are not quite enough resources to solve all the ongoing problems. Do you put out the fire on the wing or see to the injured gunner? Can the crew make it a little further to gather some intelligence before returning to base? Why is there so much fire? In this respect, the game does a nice job of reflecting the danger faced by British and American airmen in the latter half of the European theatre in World War II. More broadly, the game offers a nice counterpoint to more recent depictions of 20th century war, particularly with Call of Duty World War II's return to the Saving Private Ryan and Band of Brothers world of Normandy landings and treks across Western Europe. At the same time, Bomber Crew is not really breaking any new ground. We have, in fact, been here before. The life of airmen in the Allied forces is well-trodden ground and provided its own historical narrative norm long before Steven Spielberg realised his vision of the Normandy landings. Bomber crew immediately brings to mind Memphis Bell, a 1990 film featuring various young handsome actors that actually served as a remake of the documentary Memphis Bell, A Story of a Flying Fortress, which was released in 1944 as an effort in morale building as the war reached its conclusion. In 1990's Memphis Bell, the overall tone is pretty schmaltzy. John Lithgow plays a publicist who doesn't seem willing to acknowledge the reality of war. David Strathairn is a straight-laced disciplinarian who has his men's best interest at heart. Eric Stoltz's character at one point recites William Butler Yeats, an Irish airman, foresees his death to his fellow crewmen with a combination of the complete lack of self-awareness and emotional language that feels very distinct to the early 1990s. Bomber Crew's tone is completely different. It goes big for comedy, with the constant disaster in the style of FTL accompanying imagery of cartoon figures running around relatively haplessly to avoid their doom, if only the player could direct them to the right places in time. In doing so, it marks a separate tone from the hunky pseudo-seriousness of the 1990 film and the faint jingoism of the 1944 documentary. It also marks a nice change from the serious tone of world wars and games in both the Call of Duty and Battlefield series. In fairness, war is a serious business, and Battlefield 1 in particular did great work in its presentation of conflict during World War 1. Bomber Crew, if nothing else, highlights the range of tone indie games can reach. The art style and audio design all play into this, of course. It's difficult to imagine a big-budget AAA title shooter playing global conflict for laughs. Bomber Crew is funny and frequently adorable. As such, it's a genuinely interesting take on an historical period that one could credibly argue demands a more serious approach. Of course, nothing the developers have done here mocks World War II veterans or makes light of the human cost of bombing campaigns. The comedy here is very video gamey, if I can use a technical term. But rather than that being a limiting thing, here it allows for a tonal shift or an exploration that might be tricky in live action television or film. These characteristics also allow Bomber Crew to completely sidestep concerns related to issues of representation, as we saw with Battlefield 1 and are seeing again now with the latest release of Battlefield 5. Your crew has cartoon figures of various implied ethnicities, and there are plenty of female gunners and pilots, because this is a video game that is clearly not going for a particular degree of verisimilitude. The issue then of whether women served or what ethnicity the average pilot was and so on is completely sidestepped. The tone of the game, the art design, the style, the vibe, just completely precludes any such critique. Such critique would be even sillier than usual. Still, the base camp, the briefings, even the runs in toward the target do bring the player directly to the historical context in play here. In truth, Bomber Crew is light on detail. Its historical approach is significant distance from the kind of encyclopedic detail or historically infused exposition in other quote-unquote historical games. Because of this, however, and not in spite of it, I would argue that Bomber Crew highlights the potential of video games to convey historical imagery and ideas as well as its broad capacity to reflect existing celebrations of historical memory and public discourse. In this sense, Bomber Crew is indeed far more Memphis Belle than Saving Private Ryan, but very much does its own thing. In the process, though it may be reminiscent of tales that have been told before, it certainly feels like a fresh and fun take on a huge historical topic.
Many thanks for watching, and thanks to our patrons for their support. If you'd like to support the project, please visit us at patreon.com slash historyrespawned.